Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be doing a chatty makeup video. I haven't done one of these in a minute and I really enjoy making them. And it's a really good way for us to just kind of like kick back, hang out together and just talk, right? So today I'm going to play around with some new makeup. I got a palette from uh, Huda for my birthday and I'm really excited because it's super duper colorful and I want to create like a really fun, vibrant, super colorful eye look today. I'm just going to kind of like experiment. Hopefully it turns out all right. And I want to talk about two things actually. Um, so a lot of you guys have been asking me to really um, respond and share my opinions and just talk about the Purito you know, question or incident. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I still am a little hesitant because we just don't have all the information yet, but I will speak a little bit about it. And then I also want to talk about something that has been on my mind a lot lately. And I think it's really important. And that's just how skincare is really individual and not every product is going to work the same way for everybody, right? Like everybody's body is different. And I want to talk about why that's okay and why we need to respect to that. So if you guys are so ready, let's uh, kick back, grab some um, snacks or a drink or whatever, settle in and uh, give the video a big thumbs up. Let's get started. <music> All right, so first up, I actually already applied the primer that I'm going to use, which is the Peach and Lily Skin Shield Blurring Primer. All right, so I am gonna do a full face of foundation, and really my choice is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation Stick. Now, I usually mix two colors to get just the perfect match. I mix Y315 and Y325. All right, so let's talk about Purito, shall we? So for those of you who may not be as familiar with what's going on, um, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was at the beginning of December on Instagram, everything happens on Instagram, right? On Instagram, um, INCI Decoder, uh, Judith, who is the founder of that website, um, which is basically like an ingredient dictionary website, did post on her Instagram account um, a post about how she had... Um, been curious about the Purito sunscreen, she actually sent it off for uh, testing, independent testing through some European labs and it came back not as SPF 50, PA plus 4, but a little bit closer to SPF 19. Purito did respond on their Instagram uh, page as well, saying that they were taking the matter very seriously and that they were going to look into the matter and have their own independent testing done. They have paused all sales of all of their sunscreens, just even though the sunscreen in question is the Purito Centella Unscented Sunscreen, they have also paused the Centella Sunscreen, the scented one, as well as the Comfy Water Sunblock as they try to figure out what is going on with some independent testing. And I have shied away from making a video about it or like breaking it down or like jumping into the conversation because quite frankly, I think it's irresponsible of me to do so at this point in time. There's a couple of reasons why that is. The number one reason that I don't want to jump in is because I don't think that this story is complete. You know, as I said, we have one side of the story and I'm really waiting for that other side to really share my full thoughts. But second of all, and also very importantly, this just isn't my wheelhouse. Like this is not my zone of genius. Sunscreen formulations, like percentages of filters, manufacturing in Korea, sunscreen testing, like, you know, passing it through the Korean like version of the FDA. I don't know anything about that. Like this is not my zone of genius. This is really the time for the cosmetic formulators, the brand owners, the cosmetic chemists to get involved, the scientists. This is their time to step up to the plate and really kind of break down this information in a way that we can understand as consumers. So I just personally don't feel I have a lot to add at this point in time because I'm not an expert. I am deferring to experts just like you are, right? So I'm listening to them. So I want to give them the space to really uh, explain this properly to us. So I'm gonna go in for some concealer. I'm gonna use the same Cover Perfection Pot Concealer in color number two. And this is a really nice 
thick concealer with really good coverage and this is like so good if you get dark marks uh, hyperpigmentation that's what I'm gonna be using this on just to cover up some dark marks I do want to say because this is actually an issue I'm gonna talk about in a second I think transparency is incredibly important when it comes to these things and so I want to let you know yes I am somebody who has uh, recommended this sunscreen in the past I've used it loved it raved about it I have received free products from Purito in the past I've also done one sponsorship so that's a paid video with Purito that I did back in the summer for their Centella unscented toner and the deep um, the deep water cream the deep sea water cream why am I saying it's so weird um, so just so you guys know what my affiliation with the brand has been in the past um, obviously you know there's no affiliation currently. But what I wanna tell you is the first thing that I've really learned as I've been kind of diving into this and trying to educate myself as a consumer is the fact that sunscreens fail a lot. Like more than you would think and if you like really look into it, you will start to feel pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> this happens, like this is very common for a sunscreen to claim a specific SPF on their label and then down the road in independent testing, it turns out to not be the case. I'm gonna uh, powder down with uh, a powder from Can Make, which is J Beauty. I can never remember what this powder is called. It's this one. It's like the Sailor Moon looking um, pressed powder from Can Make. Something else that I want to kind of like throw into the ring for consideration um, as we wait for the other side of this situation is the fact that this is not a specific Purito problem. Now this is something that you may or may not know. It's something I only recently learned in the last couple of years. You know I used to think about these KBD brands having their own little laboratories where they tinkered away at making products and getting just the right formulas for their brand new line or something and that's not exactly the way it works especially for small brands. You know bigger brands like Amore Pacific definitely have their own in-house uh, laboratories and formulations and all of that but for smaller brands they do actually contract out to other manufacturers there's a whole system of um, cosmetic laboratories and manufacturers who will help develop products with multiple brands and that is the case for Purito for their sunscreen they worked with a manufacturer called now Cost. so that is actually who has developed this sunscreen really the base formula of this sunscreen can be found in multiple different brands including the Claire's soft airy UV essence and by the way, Claire's has also stopped the sale of their sunscreen. They have pulled it off the market. They are not selling the sunscreen and they are also doing their own independent testing on their sunscreen. And yet nobody's calling it the Claire's scandal or the Claire's controversy. So I'm gonna fill in my eyebrows and um, I'm gonna use a couple of different products. So the first one I'm gonna start off with is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. Um, in dark brown. This is an eyebrow pencil. So first I'm going to use the spoolie edge of this brush and just kind of brush my eyebrows upwards. And then I'm just going to use the pencil end to kind of fill in little gaps um, and just kind of like um, outline in a way the shape uh, that I want for my eyebrows. There is also kind of like these like whispers of people saying, well, I'm never gonna trust K-Beauty sunscreens again. I'm moving to Japanese sunscreens, or I'm moving to Australian sunscreens, or I'm only gonna buy from Europe, or I'm only gonna buy from big brands, not small brands. And as I mentioned before, this is actually a common problem. It happens a lot. So I don't think that we should be blaming Korea necessarily. I don't think we should be blaming small brands that have to work through manufacturers. I don't. I just don't think that we need to find that type of scapegoat. I mean, if it makes you comfortable to buy from L'Oreal or, you know, whomever more than from a like independent K beauty brand, then that's fine. But I just think that we have to kind of understand that this is not one specific isolated incident. This happens frequently. So now I'm just gonna use a little bit of brow gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. 
um, also in dark brown. I picked up a little kit from them. So this is just a little mini um, during the Sephora sale back in November. So at the beginning of the video, I wanted to make a really big point of telling you what my history of working with Purito as a brand is, because that's basically a business tie, right? Like that is an affiliation and it's really important that you guys understand that as I explain my feelings about this brand, you know, having this accusation put upon them, right? I think it's really important because transparency to me is incredibly important. Like the more transparent, the better, right? Scream it from the rooftops, please. Don't keep anything under wraps, absolutely. But a big reason why I wanted to bring it up too is because I personally feel that there were some transparency issues with INCI decoder, Judith, who is the originator of the article with the test results and the accusations against Purito as a brand. Um, she was not very clear with the fact that she herself is developing her own skincare line that will include a sunscreen. That sunscreen, I mean, is going to be in direct competition on the market with the Purito sunscreen. I'm not saying that that is her reason for posting that, that there's some malicious intent. Absolutely not, do not get me wrong. I'm just saying there was a lack of transparency of like clear in your face transparency um, and real carefulness about how this was released that really do raise red flags in my mind. There's a lot of other things about the testing, um, particularly with names blacked out. The fact that the sunscreen was sent for testing um, decanted into clear um, containers and that the lab described the texture and color of the sunscreen that they were testing, which they didn't know was the Purito uh, sunscreen as being yellow which we know that the Purito sunscreen, the unscented Centella sunscreen is a little bit closer to white. Red flags, right? Red flags there that, um, while I'm not disputing that the outcome of the SPF uh, being closer to 19, I'm not disputing that. I don't know, again, not an expert. But as a consumer who's trying to make sense of everything, these are red flags I have raised in my mind that are making me like, not necessarily taking it straight word for word, you know, at face value, because I feel like there's actually more questions with bringing this up than there were before. So I'm going to add a little bronzer um, just to kind of help uh, define my facial structure. <laughs> so I'm just using um, this is the Film Star uh, Bronze and Glow from uh, Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm just putting it like right under my cheekbone and just kind of blending it into my hairline. And then I'm going to just put it right under my jaw here. And that just kind of like gives you that little bit of that V line with your jaw. I have a pretty round face, so I like to kind of just give it a little bit more angle and definition. So I'm going to use a little bit of eye primer. You guys know I'm, I'm a fan of the old school classic. Like, is this 2012 Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion? So just a few things. I've seen some people talking about how they'll never trust sunscreens with just two filters. And that does not really seem to be the case. You know, I know a lot of people have questioned the filters. There only being two, you know, does it cover all of the UVA? Is it enough? Are the percentages enough? There's a lot that goes into formulating a sunscreen. If the issue was as easy as two filters, four filters, five filters, this wouldn't be an issue. The fact that sunscreens fail often really does prove to us that there's a little bit more trickiness involved. And again, um, Michelle Lab Muffin does explain this a little bit better than I do, but it, it's not necessarily going to be a like, if this, then that type of thing. If there's only two filters, then there's no way it could give up the protection that it states. That it's, that's not it. So, you know, if you are using maybe a different sunscreen with two filters. I don't necessarily know that you know you should be too worried uh, right now at this point in time. Another thing that I'm seeing a lot on social media and I think there can be some basis in truth for this but I think most of the basis is a lot of emotions behind it, a lot of angry feelings and a lot of betrayed and hurt feelings that go behind this. But I'm seeing a lot of people saying that they were not protected with this sunscreen, that Purito endangered their skin, they've been exposed to the, the chance of getting uh, skin cancer, this, that, and the other. They thought they were wearing sunscreen, but it turns out they were wearing nothing. I get it. I do. 
feel angry, be angry. I get it. It is, it, it does, it's shocking it, when you find out and you're like, what the heck have I been wearing this whole time? I get it. This may not go down that easy. <laughs> so just take it with a grain of salt, but like SPF 19 is sunscreen. It is protection and it's adequate protection. You weren't wearing nothing. You were wearing something. Were you getting what the label stated? Maybe, we don't know, maybe not. And I understand that. I understand the shock behind that. I understand the anger. That I do understand. But SPF 19 is still SPF. And so, you know, it is a lot of people were, you know, getting SPF 19 and that was plenty. I used the Purito sunscreen for an entire year, all summer long, all winter long. I did not have any issues of, you know, I don't burn uh, in the sun, not usually anyways, but I do tan. Like if the sun even like sees me for a second, I get tan. Like that's just who I am. I have more melanin in my skin and so I get dark. And I felt very pr protected with the Purito. I still stand by that. I felt very protected. I saw no changes in my complexion, no new sun damage developing, no uneven complexion. I had no problems with it. I live in Wisconsin. It's pretty north, like Northern Hemisphere. We have pretty intense summers, but it's not anywhere like Australia, right? And so take that in with a grain of salt. SPF 19 may be all that I need, and I do get minimal sun exposure. And so, yes, this sunscreen can still work with a lower SPF. I don't want to go too far into it. I don't want to advocate too much for it, but I'm just saying like, it, it's still sunscreen. You can still use it. If it does if it does turn out to be true that it's a lot lower, this is still an adequate sunscreen that will protect you. So I feel like I just spent a really long time like not really helping. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I just want to be really careful about jumping into this whole situation and like fanning the flames and the drama or like, you know, going in real hard and advocating for specific brands. I, to please know I'm not on either side. There's questions about, you know, the accusations. And I just, I also have questions about the sunscreen. Like I don't really know who to trust or who to believe or what's going on right now. And that's why I just really want to stay patient, as patient as I can, right? Like, cause we all want to, we all want a resolution, but I just want to have all the facts at hand so that I can make an informed decision as a consumer, right? Without a lot of fear and drama and all of that, like kind of coloring it. I really don't want that to be the case. So that's just kind of where I'm at. And that's why I wanted to talk about it as just like, I'm going through those same ups and downs that you guys are feeling right now too, but I'm just trying to hold on and be patient and, um, yeah, just wait for all the information so I can make the best decision for myself, but also, you know, going forward as somebody who does recommend sunscreens. So um, I just bought this Mercury Retrograde Palette from Huda Beauty, and I it was kind of like my birthday gift to myself. I uh, used my, like, like, my Sephora, my excuse to go to Sephora and get my free birthday gift was to purchase this palette. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna go in for the color Utopia, which do like a wash of color, all over my lids. Something that's been on my mind for a while, but um, it really kind of hit home to me when I was sort of like reading through all of the comments about um, Purito. Big kind of like narrative that was kind of coming out of all of this was people who were saying that they had um, talked about the sunscreen, reviewed the sunscreen, you know, like on their Instagram or whatever, and they said that they did not feel protected. This is, you know, pre scandal. They said they didn't feel protected with it. Maybe they got an uneven skin tone. Maybe they burned. They, they just didn't like it. And as you guys know, the Purito sunscreen is super duper popular and a lot, they got a lot of hate in the comments of those posts that they made about the sunscreen not working for them. A lot of people telling them that they used the sunscreen wrong, that there's no way that that sunscreen could have not worked for them because it's this particular person's holy grail. A lot of people actually said they feel they felt vindicated when the information about Puritil maybe not having the SPF 50 in it because they felt that the sunscreen wasn't right for them, that they didn't feel super protected with it. And when they said that, they got a lot of hate and a lot of pushback. Like, there's no way that that ever could have been possible. And so they're like, now I feel vindicated. And that's very upsetting to me because both sides are true, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
people who have said that the sunscreen is the best thing for them it protects their skin it works beautifully blah 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 that's true anybody who has said that the sunscreen did not work for them it you know maybe had patchy application they ended up burning in some spots they got you know darker uneven complexion whatever that's true too both sides are true it's not one or the other it is not one product performs one way for everybody there's no universal products okay and so that really bothers me that 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 happened that people's opinions and experiences with this product were not respected okay now i'm gonna go in for the color hot mess and i'm going to um lay that down onto my lid kind of more towards the outer corner i'm just kind of like building up pigment right now i've actually been asked about this before because there's been I wouldn't even say whispers there's been people posting about the fact that they burned or they tanned or they're you know they didn't feel protected with the purito whatever it may be this has been happening for a while i've been asked about it because it is a sunscreen that i personally really enjoy and have recommended it's not my experience i've not experienced that i can't speak to that experience but i'm not negating that it can happen it can happen with any sunscreen honestly there's a lot of user error when it comes to sunscreen that's not a diss to the the people saying that it didn't work it's just it's kind of a natural question to have in your mind but even so it really bothers me that people's experiences don't get respected in the skincare community especially when somebody goes out of their way to share their experience so next i'm going to um, keep working in at the crease and just add a little shadow with the color vortex it happens to me too like it, it does um you know, there's a lot of popular products that I don't like, that I've said I don't like, that don't work for me, and I've gotten pushback on it. I mean, people are like, are you sure? Are you sure you didn't use it the wrong way? Or did you give it a fair enough chance? It's my holy grail product. I'm, I'm really happy that it works for you, but it does not work for me, and that is okay. My opinion and my experience is not wrong, it's just different, and that's okay. Skincare, I wish I could promise you that all skincare is gonna work the same way for everybody. It's just not going to. I should keep moving this along. It's gonna be like a 40 minute video. Um, I'm gonna use the color Crash and I'm gonna put it basically like from my inner, like on my lid, from my inner corner, like just kind of to where we put a vortex with a really darker plummy color. I'm just gonna kind of cover the first kind of like three fourths of my, of my eyelid. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm so bad at describing this. Just watch what I do, okay? <laughs> okay, so here's the scary part <laughs> or the fun part because I haven't really um, played around with this too much. Um, I'm going to use the color Haze. I'm going to kind of lay that down just where we put the crash color down. I just kind of like laid the foundation. Um, so we're going to put Haze down and then I'm going to like start to add in Mercury, which is the glittery version basically of this color, like a deep teal green. You know, because somebody holds a different opinion than you, it doesn't invalidate yours does that make sense like if somebody doesn't like cream skin refiner it doesn't mean that the cream skin refiner that's been working beautifully for you can't continue to work beautifully for you they don't necessarily have anything like they don't necessarily relate if that makes sense because there's so many different factors that go into making a skincare product work or not work for somebody of course skin type and skin condition time of year and where they live can make a huge difference you know i may be talking all about super nourishing products right now but it could be summer in australia while you're watching this video or something right that's an, an influence on how a product is going to work for somebody the other skincare products that the person is putting onto their face at that point in time makes a huge difference some products just don't layer good together and they just build up thick and sticky the more experience i have with lots of different skincare products the more willing i am to accept that the more willing i'm just like yeah that that's your experience i totally get it and the less that i'm like trying to figure out why it didn't work for somebody right like it's just like move on that's their experience so just like side note um i've been like really I, I got this palette for myself because i wanted to challenge myself to play with these colors i've been getting kind of like cabin feverish if that makes sense like i don't know i'm just getting really bored um at home and i for some reason i'm just like let's like mess around with lots of makeup and play around with like different looks and like different fashion and just I don't know I'm just been kind of like in that that mode where I just kind of I'm craving a lot of different stuff right now okay so we're gonna layer on mercury so anyways I just think it's really important to build the relationship and the knowledge of your skin because that really just 
I think it actually just cuts down on the like, are you sure it didn't work for you kind of thing. I mean, we're all guilty of it. We've all done it at some point, right? Um, but I think that just getting to know your skin better is really like the best commitment you can make to this skincare journey because the more you can trust your instinct and your gut, the better, like, the better reviews are actually going to be for you. Like I recently was trying to find a new humidifier and I was getting super confused because I was reading all these like conflicting reviews and I'm like, wait a second, which one's true, right? Some people say they hate it. Some people say they love it. So like, where, what, what? And that's kind of how it can feel like in skincare, especially when you're first kind of diving in deep to things, you're just like, who should I trust? So finding, you know, skin influencers with similar skin types helps. Um, but there's people who have different skin types than me that I watch all the time and I get great information from them too. So every kind of like channel and blogger and influencer and whoever, right, is going to have little gems for you. But the better you get to know yourself, the easier it is for you to pick out those gems and use them for yourself instead of getting overwhelmed or confused because you feel like you're getting conflicting information. It's just easier to sort through it, right? And what will work for you. The human body is so unique. It's so different. It responds so differently. And having a little bit of respect for that and awe truly for that is a huge step in your skincare journey. Let's bring this look on home because it's looking a little nuts right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a um, blending brush. I'm going to try to soften up these edges up here because uh, it's looking a little bit insane. So the first thing I'm doing is just kind of buffing away the harsh edges first. Okay, now I'm going to go in for Super Moon, which is like a chunky silvery glitter. And I'm just going to do it on the inner corner to kind of bring a little bit more light. Okay, so now I'm going to do some eyeliner and I'm going to use the Matte Queen Waterproof Pen Eyeliner in black. And I did um, like a nice little dramatic, well, my kind of dramatic cat eye. I don't know how to do super dramatic eye makeup. This is pretty dramatic for me. Okay, I'm going to clean up just like underneath my eye because of course you get a little bit of fallout and things like that. So this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Light Capturing uh, Concealer. So I'm going to put this underneath my eyes just to help clean and brighten everything up. And then I'm just using a little Ruby Cell Puff um, to tap it into place. Okay, there we go. And now we're ready for mascara. And I'm gonna be using the Mizan uh, Collagen Curling Fix Mascara, which I'm a huge fan of. I really like this stuff a lot. It um, really lifts and separates my lashes and really makes them big and bold uh, really easily. Uh, I really like this one a lot. I'm gonna go in for the Etude House um, Blossom Cheek in color PK003. This is a really pretty kind of like matte sort of neutrally type of uh, blush. I'm gonna go in with some quick highlighter. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that Charlotte Tilbury Film Star palette. I'm gonna put it on my cheekbones and I'm just using kind of like a smaller brush to concentrate it just a little bit. And I'm gonna put it um, just under my eye, my eyebrow as well. And a little bit on my nose. I'm gonna finish this look off with some lip liner. This is Charlotte Tilbury. This is their Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. So the color really matches my um, my lip, my kind of like my natural lip color and I just line the outline of my lips to get a little fuller appearance. And then I'm just gonna finish it off with some gloss. This is uh, Fussy from Fenty Beauty. This is their Balm Gloss. Super popular, this was another uh, gift uh, that I gave myself for my birthday. And I really like this gloss. Um, it's got pretty good staying power, nice and shiny. So I hope you guys love this chatty makeup video. And I am so curious to know all your thoughts. I mean, about Purito sunscreen, sunscreens in general, like everybody's body is different. I'm really curious to know all your thoughts about everything we talked about. So please let me know in the comment box below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, you made it this far in the video. You made it to the end, please. I mean, like we have a thing going right now. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I released two new skincare focused videos and sometimes makeup videos every single week and turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you are healthy, happy, safe, wherever you are in the world. Be kind to yourself and to others and I'll talk to you soon.